Hello everyone, this is Caitlin and today we are making a working class 1830s corset. Let's get started with cutting. So if you've not seen the other corset video, which we make a fancy corset, I'll link that above. So we're using the same pattern because that one was a bit too big, even though I made a mock-up. I don't know why. It seems like every time I make a mock-up, things end up not fitting. But when I don't make a mock-up and wing it, things fit perfectly. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to go right ahead and work on this pattern, making a slightly smaller size. To keep everything else the same because proportionately it should all work out. It fit very well the way it um, was made. It was just too big. So uh, just cutting down a few sizes smaller, get a little bit of a gap in the back. Should work. We are using cotton sateen in an ivory color instead of the usual white. Uh, you see different colors in original, so I've seen brown ones. I'm going to need to double, uh, or I guess sandwich it, so there'll be a, a back and a front, or a lining and a regular, but it's all going to be the same fabric. So I shall go ahead and start cutting then, and we can start getting this thing put together. I have no idea how long I need to make the straps, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the very longest one. And we'll cut them down when I try out, try it on the corset. We need to remember to add a half an inch to the top of the corset. That's what I did last time. And yes, there's this really pretty pattern of uh, recording. We're not doing that today because we're copying a very plain original. Step one, sew it together. I'm going to use a back stitch to sew the pieces together. Fortunately, it's not a very shaped corset. So there's only three pieces, a um, front, a side, and a back. And worse on each side. So there's only two seams per side, so four seams per um, I guess piece, because there's a lining and a you know fashion fabric piece. After all the sides are sewn together, we're sewing together the strap to the back. Basically, well, I say the strap, but there's four of them, because there's two on the top and then two on the lining. Again, back stitch. Gusset sewing. My goodness, there are so many gussets. But yes. So, yeah. So many gussets. And technically there's 16 of them all together, but I had to cut a few more because um, I want to cord the bust gussets. And so I had to cut four extra gussets so that I could sandwich the cording in between two of them. But I still need the gussets for the lining. So yeah, there's a lot of gussets. I think we're at 20 now. This is what a completed bust gusset is going to look like. See all the pretty stitching? It's hard with the glare, but pretty stitching in all the pretty colors, or a pretty color. And so I am working on making these corded rows. I have not put any cording into this one yet. I only just got that one done. Starting the second one. I think the back stitch looks nicer, especially with the, uh, since I'm doing decorative stitching with the darker color thread than the fabric. I decided the back stitch was going to be the way to go, even though it's going to take a whole lot longer to do. And I was going to do all these gussets and put all the gussets in before I sew the corset together and do like boning and grommets and that sort of thing, but I don't think I will. I think I'm going to finish this one uh, bust gusset, have two of them done. The other two, by the way, I'm going to have to do opposite because they need to kind of face inward like this, um, where the stitching is going like out like that. I think, or maybe it's this way. I don't remember, but they're not facing the same direction. So I need two of them that are facing this way, and two of them that are facing the opposite direction. So I had to process that, but um, I think I can go ahead and put in grommets and stitch at the, well, stitch at the back, put in a, um, a, a bony channel, grommets and a second bony channel. I can go ahead and do that, I think. Um, but pr prior to doing any of the gussets in. I just won't be able to do much more than working in the back before I get these gussets in. 
Alright, I still have not finished the best gussets, but I'm going to go ahead and sew up the back and get some things done. So, back stitch in the center back, lining and fashion fabric together. And there's a cat next to me, so sorry if you hear random things or see a tail. Don't eat thread. Bad idea. No. What did I just tell you? You know to listen. Leave my project alone. Still not done with gussets, but I feel like taking a break from them. So I'm going to come over here and put in stuff for the grommets, basically. So I'm going to do um, a row of stitching here to hide a piece of boning, which I have already cut. I'm going to use metal boning in the very back because that gives me the most support. Everything else is going to be German plastic whalebone, which is the synthetic, which is the synthetic whalebone. Um, it's plastic, but it does mimic whalebone very well, and, you know, whales are endangered. So we're not going to kill any of those to get my boning. We're going to use a plastic kind. It works really well, and I really love how it molds to the body, just like real whalebone does. So it's not as rigid, and it's far, far, far more comfortable than steel. So, yay for whalebone. Yay for plastic whalebone. And so we're going to put metal here, and this is going to be grommets in between here, and then there's going to be a bit of whalebone here. And then we're also going to do a whalebone here, here, a long piece here, a short piece right here between gussets, and kind of a catty quarter one going here into the wooden bust that's going to be down here. So, want to definitely be supportive. And we're going to do this with a back stitch. Alright, I am working on cording these little gussets which took me forever to sew because I very stupidly decided to do this with a back stitch. Alright, so I just, okay, I have yarn. It is white cotton yarn. It's actually too big. So yeah, let's pull that down a little bit, not waste any. White cotton yarn on a needle. I'm going to shove it through the hole. And I leave mine too layered because I don't know. That's just how I do it. It provides more support that way. But you can just like put one layer of cording in each one. Now I'm going to cut all this excess off. Being really careful not to cut my cut my stitching. And here we are with a gusset already in. And I'm just now realizing that I left my needle and thread and such over where I was sewing. So I'm going to need to go grab that in a moment. But yeah, let's go ahead and put this on. Ideally, it should be fairly straight. Sometimes because I was I was sewing it on the bias, and so I kind of managed to stretch them out a little bit. So I'm just kind of stretching them back. You know, that's still attached. I need to get rid of that. But yeah, it's going to fit right in here. So they're kind of going in this way, making like a V shape with the gusset. At least that's what the original shows. So that's what we're doing. I've decided I'm going to do a little bit of flossing at the very, very bottoms of all the gussets, which is going to be our next step. And then we'll start putting in like boning and cording channels elsewhere. But I'm just using a back stitch like we've been doing and like we will continue to do for this entire corset. It is harder going through, you know, the two layered gusset, the yarn, and the actual corset layer. So it does take a little bit of effort. I need to be fine. I need to go put my thimble on because my fingers are just like about to be torn up. But that puts on effort. This other finger is kind of torn up too. So we keep poking this one, but this one, the. Uh, lint and keeps going inside but that's easily fixed if you wear a thimble while we're over here in the sewing room I need to go through my embroidery stuff and see what color floss I have that's gonna look similar to the color that I'm doing all the stitching in because I think that would be good to do the flossing in the same color and here we are putting 
finishing the gussets by doing a little bit of embroidery at the very edge since we didn't sew all the way up. And you see finish somehow. Buttonhole stitch is how it goes. And then it's just lots and lots of back stitching for the boning bits. More boning channels. So I have been working on boning channels for most of today actually. Um, they really haven't been too bad. And I'm almost done. So I have a little bit more of this last one here. I have this row to do, you know, this other one's done. And then I had middle ones because they just weren't matching up. One was a lot bigger than the other, or one went up higher. And you can see like where I've had to like really mess with my lines because my lines were not turning out. But um, yeah, I just have this one here. So I got the ones in the bust already done. So I started, technically started, Bony Channels back on Monday and it's Friday now, however, I didn't touch them at all from Tuesday to today, so technically this is my second day working on bunny channels. I got it sewn together on Sunday, so it took me uh, Saturday morning to get all the cording in the bus gussets, and then sewing together on Sunday. So Monday I was able to start on the bony channels. So this is technically only day two of boning channels, even though I've been working on this project for a while. I took a break and worked on a 1970s corset until my needle broke and it's an antique machine. So I had to go buy new needles and they're still coming in. So although I felt really motivated to do the 1870s corset, here I am working on this hand stitched one instead. Really the only difference between mine and the original, aside from being three pieces, which was a pattern fault, I didn't feel like drafting a new pattern. It's the same shape anyway, so um, I think in the original, this would have been the same piece. Instead of having these two different pieces, it was the same piece. So I did add more boning channels here. In the original, there was no boning here. It's a very lightly boned corset, but again, that's what we talked about earlier. I like the support. Alright, um, all of the boning channels are done. We're, we're working on cording channels. I freehanded them. I think they look okay. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And it's just going to be three easy, oops, I lost my thread. Should be three easy rows per, I guess, section. So there's like four sections. There's like this piece and this piece and this piece and this piece. So all together, like 12 little mini rows. And it's going to make them roughly the same distance apart that I did on the gussets. And this should go off pretty well. There is on the original cording in the back, however, because we had that extra seam and that meant extra boning, I'm not going to do the cording parts. So the cording was just there to add structure, and since we have the boning, we don't need any more structure. And I think we'll do the gussets, or sorry, not gussets, the grommets, the other G word, um, prior to putting in the cords and the boning. That just makes more sense to me. Alright, putting in grommets. So I have one side done. I believe I discussed before how I decided to do a spiral lacing um, because I can't find evidence for the fan lacing uh, quite this early. The one original that I have seen is very clearly a spiral laced corset originally and someone has just laced it with fan lacing. All the original engravings I've seen that show a woman in her corset uh, appear to be spiral laced, um, except for one that has what I call it bunny ear lacing, um, what I typically do for 1850s and 60s. So I decided to go ahead and do spiral lacing again until I can find evidence that a fan lacing would have existed, um, like actual period references to it. So until then, well actually of course it will always be spiral lacing because the way it is laced, but uh, perhaps for an 1840s corset or something we can do fan lacing if that Evidence comes up. I haven't looked really, like, really into it. I just know the one original I have seen that sports the fan lacing was not originally fan lacing. Someone converted it to fan lacing at some point. So when you put spiral lacing together, instead of the laces being right across from each other, they are catty corner to one another. So these first two are very close together. Um, and then that kind of, this one would go here and that, you know, it's offset. 
So I am using grommets, two piece grommets from I think it's Gold Tool something Gold Gold Star Tool I think is what it is. And those are the ones I am using. I'm using size 00. zero. I ordered them at like midnight a couple nights ago and I really meant to get the not gold ones, like the, I don't know what they're called, not chrome because it's not silvery, but the, the more steel looking ones that look more like the originals, but I apparently was not thinking straight at midnight, so we're going to use these because I bought like 300 of them, so gold it is. So what I'm going to do, I brought a cinder block into my living room, so um, try doing it outside. I usually do it outside on the patio because it's concrete. Um, I sat out there and did one grommet and there were 10 mosquitoes on my arm just like lined up and I decided that was not worth it. So I came in here and brought a cinder block in. Grommet. Other grommet. My little piece go there. Though. Little piece. That on top. This on top of that. And smash. Two grommets done. I shall see you in 12 more grommets. We are counting down towards the end. I am putting in the binding, I suppose, of the corset. So I got the bottom completely done. I'm just using a twill tape that I think is three quarters of an inch wide, maybe an inch. I'm not quite entirely sure. Somewhere in that range. Um, and I'm just folding it. And it's creating a nice finished edge on both the back and the front. So I'm working on the top. I got most of the top done. The um, very front bit, I want to have ties because that's what the original shows. And so I'm putting in ties, which is working out interestingly. So I just tacked the ties. I cut the ties about 20 inches long, um, which is about this length plus the 10 inches to actually you know, tie the bow. So it's a little less than 10 inches. I think it was like 9 inches. So it's like right from here to here was almost 10 inches. But yeah, anyway. So I'm just going to put this across here. I am going to, I, would, I didn't do actual eyelets, I kind of just made a hole, so we'll see if this holds very well. But we're making a hole with that. i got to find my lacing needle now. There it is. Putting this on my lacing needle. Sticking it right through the front. And now I have ties. So when I sew this, I want to be very careful not to catch the ties with my needle because I don't want, well, then it won't, you know, gather. So I need to be very careful with that. All right. Now we're officially, well, very nearly done. I had to put in laces. But I'm going to soak it first to try to get all these blue marks off of it. Um, prior to doing that, I kind of, you know, went over there with a damp rag, and I got most of them off, but I think I just need to soak it for a little bit, so I'll do that, and then we'll come back and lace the whole thing and be done. Finished corset. Um, turned out really cute. It is uh, fitting better than the last one. Hits, not quite so much. Probably should use a slightly larger gusset, y'all can't see. But yeah, um, the top part fits much better than the last one, so definitely... I think I'm now at five sizes smaller than my measurements on the package. Um, so take that for what you will, but um, yeah, it fits a lot better now. So there's actually a gap back there, which is what there's supposed to be a gap. So it did take me quite a while to get it on this morning. Um, I tried a new thing because usually I turn it to the where the uh, front's in the back and I lace it on and then I turn the corset. Um, and then fully lace it. And today I tried a, a style where I laced it beforehand and put it over my head. The laces were just so loose I kept getting lost in the laces so it took me like 30 minutes to get this on so I think I'm gonna go back to what I was doing before which is putting a corset on, lacing it up the front and turning it to the back. 
that works a lot better for me. That may not work better for everybody, but it works better for me and it takes me a lot less time to get dressed that way. So I'm not lost in a whole bunch of laces back there. So um, learn something, which is always a great thing to do. But yeah, it actually works really well. It's comfortable. Um, I feel supported, which that's what you should feel in a corset. You should feel supported. Uh, a little tight across the hips, but again, I think if I just loosen it a little bit, it's not a big deal. That's a little, it's wider in the back. It shouldn't be, but it's not that big of a deal. It won't be uncomfortable or anything. Um, yeah, uh, one of the straps kind of broke while I was putting it on because I was straining so far to get back here to deal with that craziness. Um, so I just had to stitch it back on, but um, it's coming together right now. But yeah, it um, fits really well. It's comfortable. I've been kind of moving around in it. I can like bend in it slightly. I can do things that I need to do. So I think it'll be good for a working corset. It um, fits really well up here. Like there's like very little rippling, which is kind of nice. Definitely needed to add that ha extra half inch up here. Um, yeah, definitely needed to do that. So glad we did that. That's the benefit of having done this corset twice now. And this is my third time actually and kind of knowing what to do. So the first time was a mock-up, and the second time I did two sizes smaller because that was too big, and then that one three sizes smaller than that one because it was so close up the back. But yeah, so um, I haven't tried it within my dresses, so I don't know how much this is going to affect um, my pattern uh, as far as the one that I made myself. I'm hoping it's roughly the same. It's the same pattern. I did everything the same, except I made it smaller in the back so it didn't close all the way. Uh, in theory, my measurements should all be the same, so it should work just fine, uh, in theory. I shall test that out later. But yeah, it's comfortable, it uh, fits well, except for the hips, but that's fine. It looks really nice, I mean, I'm very happy with it. I'm glad we chose to do the different color stitching, I think that's a really cool little effect. And it looks really nice on the corset, and it looks like it's a little bit more decorative, even though it's you know, plain, plain corset. Um, yeah, definitely this, I did a right amount of bone. I do kind of wish there was one right at my side, but there's nowhere to put it. I'd have to like create a bony channel. Uh, and there's one this way, I guess. It just doesn't go down here. I would like it to go down here, but it is what it is. And honestly, for working class corset, the amount of bones is pretty good. Well with it, it but it's still well within the range of normal. So. I guess not like I put so many bones in it. It's supportive. I, I can feel my back is very supported. I'm going to be comfortable doing working class things in this corset, which is um, the purpose of having this. Um, it's not something that I would be worried about getting dirty or messing with because it is slightly off-white and then also because um, it doesn't have any embroidery or anything like really fancy on it. I'm still dealing with a little bit of blue marks, but they came off significantly in the wash. So I think if I wash it again, it would be mostly gone. So that's helpful. I'm excited to um, be able to work with it, get my measurements, and I'm going to put on a dress in a second and make sure that my pattern is still going to fit. And then I have a dress to start. <laughs> because I want those people, once I make a decision to do something, I want it all done like immediately. I'm not going to like drag it out. So like when I made the decision to do, to do 1830s, it was immediate, even though I didn't have any events lined up for like two years. I was like, everything's going to be done, it's going to be ready because I made this decision. So once I made the decision to start doing a little bit more working class stuff, it was instantaneous. I got back from the event, I was still in the hotel room ordering, okay, I need fabric for dress, I need fabric for corsets, this is what I need, I need this, I need this, I need this. And um, we're, getting, we're getting there. So um, this is probably the chemise I'm going to wear with it. It's the cotton one that we did first from the workwoman's guide. Um, this is, I have two of them, and this is mostly what I'm probably going to wear. Uh, I have an original 1830 chemise, or 1820s, 1830 chemise, that's a very similar style. Um, it's linen, so um, I have that with a friend right now, she's taking a pattern off of it. But when I get it back, I'm probably going to recreate that uh, chemise exactly. Uh, we'll do that on the channel, um, so you'll be able to see that a little bit more in-depth study of the original, but then I'll probably wear the linen ones in the summer, because linen is cooler than cotton, and this could be like more more cold weather chemise. Um, I do need to still put um, ties in it so it's not quite so loose, but that's something that's easily remedied. Um, in the front and the back I need ties. The original has ties and the front. I'll be seeing you with some more 1830 stuff soon, 
um, and also some 1870s stuff as well, which is kind of random. I don't usually do that, but uh, thank you so much for joining me today as we made a working style planar 1830s corset. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you back here on Monday.